live bait is critical in this and understanding how to pinpoint it, how to target it, how to catch it, making sure that it's fresh, making sure that it stays fresh in the boat, having live well systems like our CV that just has great water flow and understanding how much water flow you're supposed to have. You don't want to overdo it for them, you don't want to underdo it for the fish. It's really important to understand that live bait so that it stays fresh as long as it possibly can. A fresh bait out there is very tempting to a king mackerel. If they get outside of the school a little bit, bait is, that's their protection, is a, is a school of fish. If we present something to them that's outside of it a little bit, a little bit outside of the normal, but it looks natural, that's when the strike oftentimes occurs. Day three uh, fishing this uh, this weekend. Uh, today is the fall brawl king mackerel tournament, and um, look out here looking for bait and fog. So a lot of fun, but we'll see what happens this day. You know the fog was thick, and um, you know it was it was you know, this time of year. It can be tough. The bait can be everywhere it can mean nowhere and um, you know it could be on the beach and we just weren't sure we hadn't had a whole lot of time to research and find out but based on history and the things that the my sons have been able to do with the charter fishing and just the history of tournament fishing we know where some bait could be and maybe should be so in the fog it was hard it was uh, it was dangerous so we're thankful to have you know the radar and all the uh the technology that we had the series xm weather um all of those things but long and short of it we went to a spot that we felt like bait should be and again joshua and crockett can see just about anything and and they saw one real quick flip joshua threw the net pancaked it caught plenty of bait we were off and uh, you know pretty fortunate there and uh, not always like that but uh, it was uh, it was on this event and you know so the bait wasn't the concern we we're out ready to go fishing choosing our spot and see what we can find um, summertime it's not uncommon at all to catch three or four hundred in a net and have to throw a bunch back but later in the year they get more scattered and run in smaller schools so it can take a lot more work uh, now we're going to run out of Bug Inlet and we're going to head about 20 miles to the south where we heard there were some fish being caught over the last few days and we're going to give that a shot to start with. We picked an area uh, coming out of, uh, of our inlet here running south because we're right at the uh, northern boundary line so we needed to fish south on this and we know where fish can hold uh, during this time of year and we saw a lot of birds running through the fog it was real swelly so um, took a little while to get to where we wanted to fish and you know we saw it looked real fishy it was good bait um, but it was hard to see other boats around and that kind of thing but I uh, saw a lot of birds, a lot of gulls um, that were that were you know picking up little pieces of bait that uh, Spanish mackerel and bluefish were out there. So it looked really good. We got one bite uh, and then uh, bait cut in half. It was a little frustrating, but we fished a couple of different spots that were fairly close in, um, you know, in 40, 45 feet of water. And um, you know, even in toward the piers, you know, and trying to get in there because. This time of year, some of those big cow uh, kingfish, so those females get in there, and you know, all you gotta do is get the right bite. You know, it's not gonna be necessarily the bite that we might experience up in Hatteras, a huge fish often, you know, catching 30 fish a day. This might be a one or two fish day, and uh, that's what we're looking for in this event. Not 
Troll the Edge is brought to you by Taco Marine, Troll the Edge, and CV Boats, Lead the Way, and Mercury Marine, Go Boldly. The thing about king mackerel fishing is where do you go? You know, what gives you the best opportunity to catch fish? And, and you know, we had given our chance, ourselves a chance um, at, the, at some spots right, hey, look right close to the beach, close to some piers. We tried a couple of different spots, had a little bit of information from some, some people that fish were being caught. There was quite a few boats around. Didn't see a lot of activity. Saw a couple of fish being caught, but it just didn't quite feel right. And, you know, Crockett and Joshua were talking about a, a, a location uh, about 45 miles away further south and we had to really kind of make a decision, hey, do we want to do that? Because we had gotten out into the middle of the day. We felt like we needed to give it our best chance to a bite time. It just didn't happen for us. So, you know, we were talking about it for a few minutes and, and finally, you know, we just made a really uh, collective decision, hey, let's do it. Let's go, we can get there. We can run about 40 miles an hour. It's gonna take a little over an hour to, to, to get there. And, um, you know, it was, it was, you know, we weren't real sure, but we're glad we did. Because once we got there, fishing turned on pretty well. There were a couple other boats around, not a lot, but a few. And, um, you know, it was really nice to see that first strike it hit. I think we had a double, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we, caught, we caught one fish, put it in the boat. It was about 18 pounds. The next one was a 21, 22 pounder. So that put us to where we knew we had to run to weigh the fish all the way down to Ocean Isle at that point, which was another long run. It was 45, 50 miles from there. And, um, it, it, but it put us to where we knew we had to have a good fish right in about that range to make sure that we were able to qualify and fish for the championship of the Kingfish Cup. I don't know how yeah. big the other one was. I never yeah. saw the other it's one. definitely better. Nice. Much better. All right. Good yeah. Good we can run. Good job, Madison. Good job. Good job. Killed the bait. I killed one of them. This turned out to be a really, really good move for us. You know, it doesn't always pay off like that, but it did this time. We really were struggling in the day. Had that one bite early on made the move and we got there we caught those two fish we put baits right out i was putting a blue fish out and uh, boom 34 pound kingfish skied on it and hooked up i handed the rod to crockett he fought it he put it in the box and we knew then that we had a really good fish for this event so as the angler, my job is to get every fish that we hook up to in the boat. There's a lot of big fish that are going to be caught this weekend, and you got to make a count. Fish Cup series, you have to have a hand signal for the fish as soon as you get it in the boat. Uh, before the fish is dead, you have to take a picture of it. And the signal for this one, uh, the little kid that uh, came up with it and touching your nose was the signal. Yeah, was, after we get a fish like that kind of late in the day, uh, we got about another 15 minutes that we can fish and then if we don't head in, we won't make it to the weigh-in in time. Catch a big fish late like that, you got to get on it and uh, you know, find the best path back to the skills the least amount of time. Can you see it from across like that? And we had another double hookup. Yeah, uh, downrigger pop uh, hooked up with that one. 
and then I looked up and I saw the bluefish on the short line. I saw the fish uh, eat the bait, and uh, Madison grabbed that rod, fed it back to the fish, hooked up. Um, my fish pulled off pretty quick. It was a small king, probably around 15 pounds. Um, but uh, finally, we got on top of Mad Madison's fish and got a really good look at it and see that it was a really decent fish. Uh, it was hard to tell if it was any bigger than the one that we had in the boat or not. Uh, we got a nice fish on. Um, it is 3.55 and we've got to be running by 4 o'clock. So this is uh, it's pretty, pretty nerve-wracking here. Um, but that's part of King Mackerel fishing. You just never know. That's why you keep the baits in the water as long as you can. And, uh, you know, we're probably going to have to look at I've got two in. Uh, probably got a, a uh, two right. Um, probably have to put a little more pressure on this fish, more than we normally want to. We got small hooks uh, and uh, heavy drag. You can pull a hook in a heartbeat on this uh, soft fish that's not in its mouth. I think it is. Muffin, coming back. Coming back right here. <laughs> Can't tell. It's four o'clock. Right. Neutral. Neutral. Put it on him, Madison. Don't gun it, though. Do not gun it. Just in reverse. Two reverse. There you go. All right. That's a good fish. That's good. I think that's better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. You need help? You need help? Right. Well, we need a picture. You got a picture. Yeah, that's a better fish. I think we right. boated the fish at 4.02 and we had decided that our cutoff was four o'clock that we needed to, to get to weigh in in time. So we had to, we had to push it to get to the scales in time, but it ended up being a good decision. Her fish was uh, a little over a pound heavier than the one that I had just caught. So it ended up, uh, ended up winning us a little bit more money with that one. Uh, finally gotten the scales to actually uh, get a look at the fish and see how big it is. Uh, looks like it's probably around 35 pounds, a lot bigger than we thought. So uh, feeling all right right now. Wow, what a few days of fishing. Holy smokes. Um, Hatteras two days down here on, in uh, Onslow Bay. Uh, two 34 five pound fish right at the end of the day. My God, King Michael fishing at its best. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very frustrating sometimes. Lost a monster fish yesterday. But you know what? That's part of it. And uh, we came out, we had a good time. And uh, you know, it's exciting to be here with the kids and family and, and uh, Madison joining the team. And uh, it's all good. It's an exciting time. 35.45. 35.45. Good job, guys. So here we are at weigh in again. And we're south. We're a long way from home. We're about two and a half hours from my home. And, and so we call Audrey. And you know what? She went into uh, went into little general mode, man. I gotta tell you, she's driving the dually. She's bringing the trailer down right by herself. She's uh, pretty fantastic. So it was pretty cool. She got there. We weighed this cool fish. It wound up doing some some good for us. Won a little bit of money, and uh, just the experience of it was was exciting because. It, everything that was going on that weekend all the tournaments lady angler at madison doing a great job um you know it, it's it was pretty neat the whole family uh whole family aspect of it really played into uh what was going on in, in this weekend shade fin by taco marine shade fin is a lightweight versatile shade system that easily attaches into rod holders tops and arches for convenient portable boat shade its 5 foot by 6 foot footprint and 50 plus UPF rating protect you from the sun so you can enjoy the water longer while doing what you love. Learn more about Shadefin on tacomarine.com. Shadefin, shadow in seconds. We're going to be going offshore fishing for wahoo, dolphin, sailfish, a lot of cool bottom fish with our liquid fire sport fishing. Uh, we're about 65 miles out of Bug Inlet at the northeast corner of the Big Rock. We're going to start out in about uh, 
about 200 feet of water and just kind of work out between there to 350 and see if we can find out where some bait holes and where some wahoo might be. We're going to start the day trolling for wahoo and we'll see if we can get both down one or two of them and then we might do a little wild fishing for some red porgy or some trigger fish a little later on. See it jumping out there? Right there, touch the wire, touch the wire. All right, release. All right, slow us down, guys. supposed to pull these out of the water so we're gonna have it both sides. Gave us a great fight, a lot of fun. Crockett did a great job angling. Joshua did a wonderful job keeping it on the fish. We starboard. Pretty fish with good size one too. That's a lot of fun. Feels good. Biting on my fingers a little bit. See the uh, See the sail, we can split a little bit. Gorgeous fish. Alright, boys, I'm gonna let him go. I think All he's right. good. There she goes. Feels good. All right. So, when it initially hit, it popped it out of the outrigger clip, yeah. and I started feeding it back, and I could feel the, be the uh, bill hit the bait. And I just fed it back until it finally ate it. and. Uh, hooked up and put on a show right at the beginning. I uh, made several jumps, um, peeled a lot of line off, but uh, fish still had plenty of energy when we got into the boat and got a nice clean release. You know, my sons are really, really good fishermen. I've mentioned that and, and it's exciting to see them care so much about the charters that hire them to take them offshore. If they go out and fish for wahoo or sailfish or uh, mahi, it's really important that they put a, the customer in the opportunity to have an exciting day, put meat on in the box, make sure that they go home with all the things that they had with the experience for fun, exciting, fight the fish, get to be able to eat the fish. And you know, the, the knowledge that they gained over the years from water temperatures, uh, bait, where it is in the water column, how to make presentation, it's really important and they've done a great job of making sure that their clients have a lot of fun on the water. They, you know, they get a lot of return business. The customers really enjoy it. They like teaching them. They're kind to them. That means a lot when you're out there and you spend a lot of money to having somebody take you offshore. It's really good to have somebody care about what they're doing so that you learn and have a good time. Troll the Edge was brought to you by Sirius XM Marine for fish mapping and all of your offshore weather data and Cannon Downriggers Run Deep.
on with it's junk. Um, so I don't think it's a sailfish. Definitely has speed to be a washer. I got one coming up. Okay. Peeled it. Yeah, it peeled it off pretty good. Fish ran hard. Hopefully it's a good wahoo. Yeah. made it run like a much larger fish and fight like a much larger fish. I don't fight a lot of fish anymore, but it wore me out. That was the third bait that fish hit. By the end of the season, uh, a lot of the teams, especially the ones that fish as many tournaments as we do, they're kind of burned out. They're, they're ready for the season to end, ready to have a break. But come December, they're already thinking about the next year. They're talking about what are we going to fish next year. They're watching the, the websites of the tournaments to see when they announce their dates. And so they're, they're already, by December, they're already for the next season to start. It's just an addictive sport.